okay i think we're live <laughs> all right i can i can never tell because i don't have somebody telling me that i am or not so i'm only seeing what i'm seeing but anyway uh welcome to the now thursday morning fundamentals class with kier my name is kier uh i'm 23 year old first year tattooer out of Western Massachusetts. I tattoo out of Wonderlust Tattoos in Amherst, Mass. And I'm here today to talk about um, another segment of fundamentals. Um, so pretty much what we do here is go over basic fundamentals of art and tattooable art, which there is a fine difference, um, which we've been slowly approaching that definition and, and uh, phrase for that. But, um, I just wanted to make a disclaimer that I do apologize for the so short notice of the change of times. Um, I did just get into the new studio at Wonderlust. So um, having the classes at nighttime, not only kind of inflicts with that, but at the same time, I felt it was kind of in the middle of everybody's day since it now was in the middle of mine. So to give everybody a better opportunity and chance to um, participate, not only, but watch and listen and, um, do the homework and everything. I think it'd be best if we did it in the morning. Um, plus, it's, it seems like a better way to wake up and do fundamentals than to end the day doing fundamentals. Um, because the more you progress in your artistic war, uh, realm and journey, you can really use the fu uh, fundamentals to practice and start off your main composition or of sorts. Um, so with that, today we're going to be learning about filigree and acanthus leaves. We're going to keep this um, series a little short. I know my last basic shapes one was like three or four episodes, but the last episode of this segment will be next week. Um, it'll be our final. So um, today we're going to kind of jumble in a lot of information in one go, but at the same time, not really <laughs> because it all goes based off of what i was talking about last time which is the golden ratio um and i had everybody do smoke as an introduction to acanthus leaves and filigree um to kind of get your mind used to the way that things are supposed to be flowing in a pleasing manner to the viewer um and also for yourself so you're not freaking out <laughs> so let me get screen shared here. Also, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good day. I do have the chats open here, so I will be able to hang out and say hello. Uh, and I'll release the Zoom link in, I know, uh, after I've done said my spiel uh, for the day. All right, so screen share. I hate that there's a timer every time. Okay. So uh, canthus leaves and filigree. That's what we're doing today, like I've said for a million times. <laughs> so pretty much um, filigree was one of the first things that I kind of learned, but also was the, the most difficult thing that I personally learned in my apprenticeship. Um, and this was the absolute foundation, not only for the flow and fit, which is, you know, one of the first things you learn in the reinvention of the Tetsu Canon, but this is how you can train your brain to start making tattooable compositions and using that in the benefit of tattooing to better fit the body that is, you know, shaping this tattoo. <clears throat> uh, so... As you can see on this little right hand corner, that's what an acanthus leaf looks like. Um, I did learn that it is native to the Mediterranean and it grows in very salty air. I did not know that. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, they come in all different kinds of ends and shapes. And sometimes they're pointy, sometimes they're round, um, sometimes they're skinnier, kind of like a fern, um, or sometimes they're a little plump like this one is, which um, I can understand now why it's used in such a, um, I guess, formidable way or fluid way, because they come in so many different berries as far as the ends go, being rounded or pointed, and as far as the shape goes, being long or plump. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so it does have meaning. Um, but before we get more in depth onto that, last week we did have some homework. And this was our only turn in, uh, which we saw this pretty much go through its phase last time. This is Kyle's. That's his Instagram, if anybody wants to follow him. <laughs> um, but I am going to critique this as they do on the Monday night exercise. Um, so let me say a couple things, Kyle. Uh, I do love the way it came out. Like I love, it is very your style. And I really love that and enjoy that you're already at an early stage of your career, already defining your um, style without really putting too much emphasis on it. Like it's very fluid to you. And I, I, I really, I'm very inspired by that. So just had to mention. Um, but to better help your fluidity in here, I was looking at this last night when you posted it, and um, I know I see that you're trying to go for the star effect here, and I'm gonna kind of go over it, and I hope that you don't mind that I'm doing this. But just far as line of direction or you know line of action, okay? And line of action is at one single point or fluid motion from the beginning of your composition to the absolute end. So if I was making like a, a figure, right? The line of action would be the center gesture line where from the tip of the fingers, you know, to the toes, if I was doing, you know, like a ballerina or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's early. <laughs> so, to better understand, I start from your natural point of here, right? And you can even just kind of have it have an origin point, you know. But you can still follow that star motion, and you can really do, you know, triangles still if you felt like it. And there's many ways you can go about this. Like you can start it from here and I like go all around like this and then start building off that way. And it's difficult to understand this without understanding a canthus laser filigree, which, you know, this is this is what's gonna help you today. So I, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're already understanding to put things in a star form, but also give it a form of motion and a fluidity to it which is we're gonna learn more today. Um, and then from this structure, you can build the shape off of it, right? Which obviously that's not what you're trying to do. Like I see the skull that's in here, which I think is so cool. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite things. Like it really, I saw that when you were drawing it and even the snake that's down here. I saw those uh, already indicated moments when you were drawing this on my last class. And I was like, I really hope he does something with that. And, and you did, so proud of you, buddy. That was awesome. Um, but after today, I think I'm pretty excited to what you're gonna make with this next composition, which will just be filigree and acanthus leaves, um, to see what you take from this class as far as um, fluidity, motion, uh, structure, line of action, all those fun words. <laughs> um, I did do one as well. Um, I did it last night. This is all I kind of got to. I kept saying that I was going to do color pencil and now is the time I did it. Um, so I didn't spend a crazy amount of time with this, but if I obviously were to go back into it, I would kind of uh, establish my darker areas a little more, a little more contrast, uh, kind of a little confusing. No, I'm on the wrong layer. Oh, we're already starting. Um, I would have defined this area a little more. Uh, when I did initially draw this, I did the thing that I usually do, where I make a straight line somewhat in the middle of my fluid structure. So I was trying to go around that by, you know, making this come up in this way. 
which worked a little bit, but there was still a little bit more fluid structure that needs to happen. And don't mind Rafiki if you hear him. He needs to announce to the world when he's caught his toy. So he's fine. <laughs> um, so pretty much that's what I would do. Um, I put this red behind here just to make all these cool tones kind of stand out, which will happen. Um, but yeah, the, the like I was saying just before, you know, it's got this one single motion to it, and then everything is built off of that main structure, which is pretty much what we're going to be going over a little more today, like I've said a million times. Um, and then if you want to need to re-emphasize about the golden ratio, um, it's all up in this piece right now. And if you don't believe me, I have maybe like an example, you know, maybe, maybe. But like here, what if you just put these here just to prove a point? Nah, man. <laughs> this here is the craziest thing about this ratio. It's, it's everywhere. <laughs> it's like red pill, blue pill type of thing going on right now. I completely understand why we're kind of freaking out about this all the time. <laughs> Um, not only because I just think it's so cool, but like, just come on, man. <laughs> I just, this is crazy, crazy that this is the way that it is. This is the way. Anyway, enough of me fangirl. Um, so that's what I did today or last week. Um, but let's get into a canvas, back into it. All right, so in the Greek culture, uh, canthus leaves are a symbol for immortality, uh, you know, live a long life. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't know what the significance of that is. Um, if I was back in the 450 to 420 BC era, I'd definitely ask. <laughs> um, it's used in mainly columns in the Corinthians, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, that's where you see them most of the time are in buildings, structures, um, but they're kind of everywhere. Uh, if you aren't too sure, they're on dollar bills. So next time, you, if you have cash, if anybody even uses cash now, uh, look on the back of them, they're all over the place. So these are some really, really, the top two on the right-hand side are probably two of my favorite compositions that I've seen of filigree slash uh, acanthus leaves. And why I call it filigree slash acanthus leaves, because obviously these are not what acanthus leaves look like. You know, I'm sure on the bottom right hand is probably most accurate, um, but the top right one, even like the top left one is stretching it, but these aren't what they look like out in nature. So that's why I call it filigree at the same time, because it's used as an ornamental piece to accent something, even though in these images on the top, they are the main subject. Um, so on the right-hand side, sorry, left-hand side, you can see how the ends are and see what I was talking about before, that some of them are rounded, pointed, elongated, or plump, okay? So that means you have a broad range to make these and still make it look like what it's supposed to. Okay, making these fluid. Um, so it's kind of cool that through history, they've changed as well, which has been a prudent factor. So you see, you know, on the bottom right here, they're really rounded. I mean, you have a couple little points, but they're mainly rounded. And as they carry on through history, they started becoming a little more pointier, having an actual leaf shape to them until they started taking on their own, you know, subject line, I should say. Um, 
and most importantly here, here I thought this was no tattooing. Well, it is. Uh, check this out. We got two of our buddies here. We got Brandon Schultz and Guy. Okay, using these basic fundamental thinking into their artwork, and these. This is okay. This is filigree as the main subject, but these is just two examples of what you can do with it and why it's important. Okay, don't just look at the subjects as just like, oh, so these are just a four filigree tattoos. No, okay. Here's the whole point with this, okay. Let me just put the right brush here. I'm gonna do something right here, right? Do you see the way it shapes the arm? Okay. Do you see how each segment is coming off one another? Okay. Do you think they know how to draw some campus leaves? Oh, I betcha. I betcha they do. Okay. Do you see how it shapes that deltoid into the biceps, tricep, like, it looks like it belongs on the arm. Like it's a part of them. And that's what tattooing is. Okay. Making it look like it was there all the time. That's why it's forever. It's a part of you. It's a piece of you. Okay. That's why I think this industry is so gosh darn sacred still, even though it's been very commercialized, popularized, and televisionized. It still has some sacredness to it because you are making a piece of artwork a part of somebody, okay? Told, told their nurse has to change their diapers and goes, oh, that's a rad tattoo, okay? So this is why it's very important to understand this, okay? But you, like I said, you don't have to use it as the main subjects, even though this is biomech and this really is like a filigree biomech -y type thing, it can still be used as accents, like shown here. This is um, a coworker that I actually have now, Stephen, and he was actually doing this last night. Uh, not this piece specifically; he's doing a different piece, but he likes putting in these negative space flows here, and it's going to keep it. Yeah. Um, so he likes to do that, but still, if he hadn't done that, right? Like, let's just say. Let's just say he did some like super dark to gray gradients all around the edges of this, right? Let's just say. Do you see how it's like stagnant and looks on the arm? Okay. Even if this was, you know, if that wasn't here. See how it just, it just looks like it's, let's say, yeah, it's there. Okay. But. Without that, it now looks like it's a part of him. It's, it's been there the whole time, man. I don't know what you're talking about. He's born with that tattoo. Because of the way it shapes his arm specifically. Okay. Do you see this? Okay. Oh, and let me, let me do one thing real quick. Ready? Oh my lord <laughs> oh what a wonderful time right sometimes sometimes i make a little bit of sense <laughs> but this is just stretching it this is just me emphasizing again and again like i do in every chapter where i emphasize specific keynote okay that a Golden ratio is very, very important, but you can also define that with your triangles, okay? Because they're everywhere. <clears throat> and using filigree and acanthus leaves to start training your brain in a fundamental manner to shape your tattoo to the person that you're giving it to respectfully, okay? <clears throat> And these are just some small examples here. These are some a little lacklustery ones, but cute. 
Um, just give me one second here. Let me take a drink of water. So let's get into the actual construction part of this. One second, sorry. Okay. Make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm kind of winning with this one today, huh? All right. Um, so I kind of took this image here. Um, I'll post in the description who the artist was that did this wonderful uh, demonstration here. Um, but it's a very good beginning demonstration of this. So obviously you see the incorrect version, right? Like they got some swirls down, cool. Like not everybody's swirls are perfect. So I'm not gonna attack anybody on that because everybody's gonna start off terrible, okay? <clears throat> what I wanna point out is what's happening right here. And I've mentioned that already, um, that you really want these to connect in a fluid motion, okay? Seamless, 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 seamless. Like you can just extend and have it go on for eternity. And then eventually you can start building shapes like here, which I do have to point out, I kind of did laugh a little bit because it's like, okay, cool, cool. We'll get the incorrect version, the correct version finished. <laughs> Which I, I do have to point out that it was told to me last night when I was like, all right, I just need to some advice and a, a pipe up to do this tattoo that I have today. Because I know I can do it, but, you know, there's going to be those doubts always. And they're like, okay, step one, do the outline. Okay. Step two, do the rest of the tattoo. <laughs> and I just, I'm sorry, I just had to mention that because it was really funny. Um, so I kind of did an overlay already here, and I kind of did it upside down, so don't mind me, I'm gonna flip this. Uh, we're talking once again of line of action. So the line of action in here is, I kind of already should have it drawn out on the left-hand side, but right over it, you know, would be this motion that's right here. Okay. <laughs> so you can see that I build everything off of it with C curves and S curves and little arcs, which are C curves without the other end. That's what Jeff Gogway calls it. Um, and within here, Jeff Gogway even mentions in his video, which I think, I believe I posted up on the exercise group, is to look for these motions towards the end. I can't really make one with this. because it's a little too straight, which is a noted to fix, but, uh, this one here is kind of what you're looking for. See how they come into an almost swirl curve motion? Okay, that's what you're looking for. And then after that, obviously, you can see I started making leaves that go with it. And if you're a little confused on the leaves, truthfully, it's my favorite part. Um, it took a while for me to actually start getting to that point. I would start off by... <laughs> by literally just making a big S, that's not an S, that's a two, whatever, <laughs> an S curve, and just practice doing this part of it. Just what I call dressing them, you know? Just start by doing that, which is what I'll demonstrate in a second. But I did this like just watching TV there's really no thought behind it. You're kind of just making a fluid motion, but you can tell I'm already making a straight line. It's always my problem. 
Um, so if there's anybody out there that can help me you know, fix that part, I think it's because I already start off with this straight motion here and there's just two little arcs on the edges, but who knows, we'll figure this out. Um, so back to that, sorry. <laughs> So when it comes to making the edges here, okay, you can like the definition, you can make them rounded, you can make them pointed, and you can give them kind of an accented dressing motion, okay? You can make them super skinny, right? You can make them super plump, right? And give it some sort of accent. Right, plump, give it some contour lines, maybe another one here, and just start building. Okay, so this is the part where you can have fun and kind of like not so much stress out about it, but you're accenting it. Just keep remembering that fluid motion that it's supposed to be, um, you know. So, I'm not for my spiel here. Today we're going to be doing the acanthus leaves. Um, I have this this way. I have such a tiny iPad, so don't mind me. Um, it's just like the little eight and a, eight and a half by eleven. So when I turn it this way, it's like drawing on a postcard, which isn't terrible. So uh, my fluidity might be off a little bit. But this is the time where we are going to make um, four four thumbnails and um, kind of practicing what I've kind of been demonstrating a little bit. I'll kind of keep going into it a little more. Um, I kind of have some brushes set aside and kind of show you how you can use any chiseled uh, marker or highlighter to start practicing the fluid motion. Because if you're just starting out, like I'm, I'm saying like just starting out, and you want to learn how to make more fluid motions and more tattoo images. This is the start. And I only, don't mind me, only want you to focus on the basic format of it. Ah, two for two, come on now. Focus on making the fluid, this part, like this is it. This is all I want. Just sit here and build off your S curves. See how many triangles you can make. Like, this is all I want. And then when you get really comfortable with that portion of it, is when you can come in and you know have a solid foundation. And then when you can come in and uh, with like a big pen or micron, anything like that, anything permanent, because this is how you can practice your line work as well. And come in and start making something happen. And have it continue on, not. Uh, and then I usually use uh, Copic markers or um, color pencils or both and just make a cool composition. That's usually when I practice my color as always. Uh, let me post this up. And I understand that it was very short notice. So if nobody, nobody joins me today, I won't be, I won't be sad. I have some things I can still talk about here. Uh, Da, 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 da. Don't mind my singing while I post the link up here. Uh, 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 okay, I posted it. Uh, if you're watching from any other source, this uh, you can join my Zoom link here and hang out with me and draw and give me some tips and tricks on how to improve. And I can do the same um, by downloading the free Reinventing the Tattoo app and joining the subscribers edition, which is less than a dollar a day and has been an absolute godsend <laughs> to me. <laughs> and from this point on, 
Uh, so definitely give it a download, come join the classes. I'd love to meet all of you and hang out, learn some stuff myself because gosh, it's, it's gonna be a long journey and I need some buddies. So come hang out. Uh, but in the meantime, ugh, let's draw some acanthus leaves here. And I'll take myself off of share because this is really happening right now. Um, so in the meantime, if anybody joins, until somebody joins, uh, I'm gonna talk about this pretty much my awakening with filigree. Uh, I'm gonna call it that, even though it's a little dramatic. So um, the reason why it took me so long to learn filigree um, was because I was trying too hard. And I'm not gonna say that just for, for filigree, but this is gonna be about everything. Okay. Um, I would tell my mentor all the time, like, I'm, I'm trying really hard, like I'm trying really hard. And for those of you out here, and I should hope everybody out here who wants to be a tattooer really bad, like I'm saying, like, like you would die <laughs> to be a tattooer, a good tattooer, a reputable tattooer, <laughs> an artist per se, not even just tattooing. Um, you can understand that you are trying just as hard as you want it. And that's um, common, especially in artistry, especially the closer and closer you get to what you think is the goal or set time you know, in that motion. And I learned from a lot of trial and error and loss of a lot of things that trying so hard is actually gonna ruin it. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I learned about what is called a wu wei or um, non-doing that I started to understand the philosophy around just letting go. Because every time I tell my mentor, I'm trying really hard you go, don't. There isn't, it's like what Yoda says. <laughs> do or do not, there is no try. And it was like, what the heck does that mean? You know, that means mm -hmm. there isn't, there isn't. That's it. So you either are or you aren't. And I'm not saying you are or you aren't trying, because that's what I thought it meant. You either are doing or you're not doing. Okay. <laughs> Trying hard. Think about it this way. Okay, think, let me extend an olive branch here. Okay, for those of you that are not understanding my, you know, spiel. Okay, it is common for a child, right, when they get a kitten. Okay, when they see little babies, they're like, "Oh my god, so cute." and they pick it up and they're loving it and they're feeling all the love and they squeeze the ever living crap out of it. And then what happens? They accidentally do the deed of killing it by accident. It's common, they don't mean to, they're not being malice or anything. They just loved it so hard that it died. <clears throat> Which, <clears throat> can be seen in the same way with how much we love our art and how much we love being an artist. And I loved, I still do, I shouldn't say in past sense, I love being an artist. I'm married to my work and I eat, sleep and dream art. So you can imagine my frustration when filigree just wasn't coming to me and I, could just do like a speed through video just to show everybody the notebooks and piles and piles and notebooks and paper that can't even be accounted for of just filigree. Not even decorating them, just the basic S curve structure and building off of it. And I just wasn't, I wasn't getting it for years. And, um, 
it put a big hindrance because I really wasn't understanding tattooable images, nor was I making correct tattooable images because of that factor. <clears throat> and you can say to yourself, here, don't, don't beat yourself up. I'm not beating myself up. This is just what my state of mind was at the time. And um, it wasn't until I learned who way. And we're going to get into what Wu Wei is. Okay. Because I think it's very important that everybody knows at least that it exists. Do what you will. Take the information. Don't take the information. Maybe you're not ready for it. But I'm still going to speak of it because it's very similar to the subject that we're on. And in order to make proper filigree, to make proper fluidity, you need to be fluid within yourself and who you are as an artist. Um, everybody talks about flow state, or as the Westerns call it, in the zone. I'm in the zone right now. Just leave me in the zone. Come on, man. So <laughs> being in the zone, you know that feeling, that at peace, that things are happening, things are coming together and it's working, I'm working and I'm very excited. I'm fluid in the zone, can't wait. Okay, that's flow state, a state of mind to which I call in between being attentive and zoning out, right in the middle. It's like the purgatory of zoning out, okay? It is shown in the Taoist book, okay, that the Lao Tzu made, okay, it says right in the middle of it, which they call Wu Wei the way. So when you've heard Mandalorian, they say, this is the way, this is the way, <laughs> literally. It states, the way never acts, yet nothing is left undone. So when they say Wu Wei not doing, they don't mean less effort, laziness, no action, laying around, lounging. They don't mean that, okay? It is the paradox of effortless doing, just doing, okay? Being at peace while engaged in your tasks thing can happen and it's very important that you connect to that portion more frequently i shouldn't say just while doing filigree or acanthus leaf but just in general in life the minute that i let go of a lot of things attachment anger guilt god life got so much better <laughs> I felt at peace, that things would come together when needed and with the proper state of mind and confidence that like anything is absolutely possible. So it wasn't until I actually started practicing Wu Wei, which in the way that you can practice it is just letting go, being attentive to that state of mind, but understanding if you focus too hard on that state of mind, you'll fall right out of it. It's the in-between, the doing of not doing. Through gentle persistence and through compliance with the specific shape of a problem, an obstacle can be worked around and gradually eroded. God, it's such a good book. I recommend everybody read that book. The Lao Tzu book, Taoism. So it's like what Bruce Lee said, be like water. Water can fit into any shape or form. It seems effortless and fluid, but yet with enough force, it can take down everything. Oh, what a good way to wake up. 
<laughs> I was pretty hyped about this subject, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, because that Wu Wei is a very important thing to me, and uh, I practice it every day, not attentively. Like I don't just like while I'm driving, I'm just like I'm in the zone. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It just is. Um. And that's the best way I can explain it, which is the worst way of explaining it, but you have to understand for yourself. And then when you, it finally clicks in for you, if it ever does, you can just be like that. Ah, I get it. That crazy care was making some sense. <laughs> so I hope that does happen for you if it hasn't already. Um, but as it's for filigree. Okay. The most important question, or shouldn't say important question, but the one that has been popping out the most when asked, you know, what you want to learn from these classes, uh, making tattooable images is probably, you know, the most popular one that I've gotten, um, which is important. There is, and it's, I'm glad that everybody knows the differences because there are differences. And not to say that art pieces out there, like fine art pieces can't be tattooable image, they absolutely can. Um, but it's being more attentive now in tattooing and modern day tattooing to have your tattoos fit the body more um, than just slapping them on there. And understanding the rules and um, philosophies to follow to understand that way of, of thinking and processing. Um, so I encourage everybody to do the filigree and, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to, that's okay. I, I was also having such a struggle with, um, filigree because I was so against it for so long. Cause I, I just wanted to be like the best artist tomorrow. You know, I didn't want to do simple S curve structures all day. I didn't want to do spheres and cylinders. I wanted to make the cool compositions that I know I have in my head and have them make sense, but I can't have them make sense if I don't understand fundamentals, the structure, the foundation, the blueprints. Without that, what what is it? It's just you fumbling around trying to find parts like you're building a desk from Ikea. You just There's no direction or instructions on how to make the compositions that are in your head. There's only structure and foundation. And from that, you're just building from those basic fundamentals that you already know. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm gonna keep saying it for the rest of my class forever until I don't do them, which I hope is never. I like doing them. <laughs> I talk to myself anyway, so what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So I think for mine, I'm just gonna show the simple structure for now. And I do have to go in a little bit. I do have, I have a very fun piece today. I'm going to be in the zone for it. All right. So we can say this simple structure here, right? Um, I'm using a cool brush that I kind of picked up while getting some free brushes. I want to uh, put a Google Drive of just brushes on there. So I hope to do that at some point and just have you guys take them, truthfully. Uh, I'm referencing this one that's right here. I just like the way it's moving, but since I have such a small screen, I'm not doing, you know, the whole hua boo. I'm just concerned about this one little section, which is okay. Um, but you can see here the fluidity that's already happening. It's all coming from a center point here. And some people can even curl layers. Right. And 
happens. And I'm just, just to be this person, just to be this person. It wouldn't be me if I didn't. Oh man, you know, like, it's it's been a crazy road trying to learn this, okay? And thank God Ricardo has had the patience, Mr. Triangle person, to be like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just wait. They're just not ready to understand the importance of these triangles. So, <laughs> thank God, buddy, for your patience. But do we see this? Do we see what's happening? <laughs> Isn't this nuts? <laughs> Oh man, sorry, fangirling again. So back to it. So now I can start actually building up from these. And sometimes I'll do a couple of them. You know, and we'll do the little fat ones. Okay, right now I'm kind of more concerned with the outer silhouette of it. Like I do have some intersecting lines, but that's just not to confuse my own brain. I won't go in and actually start detailing them like you see in here till after the step. Um, even like blocking in my values, like I'll block in like the dark parts kind of immediately just to already start building some sort of structure to it. But that's we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm getting ahead of myself. Finish this part. This one's not really attached. So that. Hmm. That's a tricky one. Well, maybe we'll just. Leave it there like that for now. Why not? And this is obviously a very sloppy, worn down version of it. But it's just to point out what you could do with it. Thank God for procreate. <laughs> Which don't get used to procreate. Definitely switch your mediums up once in a while, please, because getting used, you're not used to getting, you know, acclimated to not making mistakes is not going to land you in a proper state of mind when you do actually fail for real, for real which will happen. Don't try and avoid it. It's a terrible experience. So <laughs> now I'm just kind of fixing up what I don't like. Okay, I kind of still don't know what's going on here, but that's okay. Maybe I get rid of it, do something else with it. Two, that's my thing today. Okay, so we kind of have our basic outer silhouette here. And by silhouette, I mean anything that is not space, which is anything that's, you know, surrounding this composition here. Um, let me go in. I'll stick with the pencil. Uh, and then I can start making little accent points. Um, declaration of sort. You can like bend some leaves around. Give them some sort of dimension. Put little 
drag our marks in here. And that's probably it. We're making some filigree. But you see it's all following that same motion. Triangles are still there, <laughs> in case you were wondering. Got it. Layer. I wasn't too sure if I did or not. Don't make a straight line. We can get rid of our outer silhouette. And we can get rid of our under. And we're kind of left with filigree. Now and then from this point here, um, I can start darkening up these points. We got a buddy here. <laughs> so I've got to talk to myself. Hopefully he doesn't tell me I've been on mute this whole time. <laughs> that would be sad. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Um, I'm I'm doing good. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. Good morning. It's, it's, you have not been on mute all this whole time. You've been oh, uh, thank, thank God. loud and clear. It's, it's <laughs> awesome stuff too. Thanks. Uh, stayed up way too late trying to study for this. Um, but very excited. I can, I, I will say that when I did first start this whole filigree segment, I was like, man, I haven't done filigree in forever, but now I feel back into it. <laughs> right. I'm like, sure you feel that way with your classes all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. I've been learning so much just by like trying to explain methods and stuff like that, that I might take into consideration as far as uh, observing shapes and the composition and making it way more approachable. Uh, you've made, I think your last, this last demonstration that I just caught where you're, you put down those three simple strokes, uh, and you kind of built off that showing those like angles, those triangles and stuff like that, that, that are the underlying composition that really makes it super easy. And it's, it, it's, um, kind of one of those obvious things where you're like, Oh my God, look right there. It is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, isn't that really the fundamentals of things? They're kind of just like, oh, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, it's a lot like you. I heard you talking earlier about like the way and like life and approaching life. Um, I I take that in consideration as well. Um, I like the fact that if you break it down, everything can really be that simple, can't it? Like you can make your day great. You can have a good time with anything you approach, anything that you do, as long as you're just observing the simple. Uh, underlying composition of it all and it is a great day it is a great way to wake up wake up and uh, start your day this way too I like I like the the morning time drawing class this is great yeah I, I prefer the morning too um because mm -hmm. nighttime it kind of is just like it's the end of the day like I don't really <laughs> right. I don't know how a guy can do it but I just like oh man I just want to draw it I want to talk about stuff and we'll kind of want everybody to leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. This is my Zen time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's my, uh, if you look at me and I'm staring at a corner in the room, it's just because my brain is shut off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'm glad that you are resonating with that, with the Wu Wei thing. That, that stuff's so important to me. And it's yeah. like, as, as soon as I learned that, it was like learning triangles all over again. It was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it makes so much sense now. Yep. So, yeah, they are. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 
And I like how you uh, do your classes where it kind of a little bit similar to mine where you kind of go with art being the fundamentals of philosophy as well. I, I really yes. appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Because I think the same exact way when it comes to you know artistry, and I know a lot of artists aren't the same, but I think it's very important that you also learn in that way because it mm -hmm. will open your mind to different possibilities, especially drawing in your natural realistic sense here. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you completely because like you kind of become more observant of your true self, you know, and like your voice kind of starts coming through if that's the case. Like you were talking about earlier with with Kyle's, uh, Kyle's style kind of, you know, showing through a little bit, you know, pretty soon in his, uh, in his career and such. It's, it's pretty awesome. And it's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you, a person will pick up a guitar and learn how to play it within a few minutes or a few months. And then like, I, I've been trying to play that thing for years and I'm still trying to learn how to play it. You know what I mean? So like, <clears throat> so you have those every once in a while, but yeah, it's definitely a good way to observe things for sure. The observation, um, life and art, art and life, it's they both replicate each other for sure. And the fact is, as artists, we can kind of observe it and create it for ourselves. Uh, we have an imagination that we're a little bit more in tuned with, in tuned with, I think. And sometimes we have factors that are underlying within our own person, our own person, and our own opinions that that might inhibit that. But the more clear you make the path, the easier it is to obtain that 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 image, that creation. You know, it's, it's, um, and whatever it takes for you to be able to do that, more power to you, as long as it's not hurting anybody, you know? Absolutely. It, and it's better to be, it's better to be in a positive uh, state of mind anyway. I mean, the more of that kind of a state of mind you are, the more clear and open you are to other people's opinions, other people's observations, the, the easier your life is, the easier you make your day. So it's pretty cool. I agree. I concur. I concur exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that um, I, I'm and I'm honored that I get to do these classes and kind of learn for myself as well how to communicate with people as far as making everything teachable. You know what I mean? Because everything could be it is teachable. Like the golden ratio is a very difficult subject because it could be taught as a, its own chapter. You know, broken oh, yeah. down. But right trying to sum it up in you know 45 minutes or less is a difficult task so you have to rewire yourself to communicate with the public a little easier so that they can understand it as your audience it's crazy right yeah that's that's a good way to look at it like you know i agree with you you know it's it's good way i mean it makes you understand it a little bit easier as well um the comprehension what you like we're talking about you break it down and you make it approachable and it makes a little bit more sense. You're not as um, timid to approach it. You're not as timid to, I know for me, uh, like we've talked about many times, um, terms, art terms have always been like a struggle for me, but uh, starting to do these classes and being a part of like sharing that moment uh, and that truth uh, that I've avoided it for such a long time has been a very resourceful learning tool. And like, I've actually started appreciating art that much more and in depth as well because of it um and i can i feel the same way about that absolutely yeah so it's pretty cool and, and i do like like what you're saying and i'll go back to that which is uh you know it, it it allows for other people to feel the same way about learning it um when you break it down for them and you break it down in the simplest of terms uh there and i like the way that you also explain there's a lot more to this and this might be the uh, the little kindling, the lit kindling that starts the flame for your interest in it. So you can kind of, you know, go and study it yourself as well and then start sharing that in your process. And um, it's just a resonating, a resonating effect, you know, all built out of growth of one person's like interest. So that's pretty cool. I'm so honored. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. You're doing great, man. You're killing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Um, this is this has been what feels like such a short journey, but I feel like I've experienced so much. But you know, it's technology for you. Yeah, Being able to travel around the country and still learn while doing it, and right, getting all these opportunities because of technology and because of reinventing has just been a wild trip all its own. Oh yeah. 
Tell me about it. It's going to take these new generations of artists, including myself, you know, generations very quickly. So it's, it's very exciting. I can't wait to see, you know, what the rest of the generation has <clears throat> of, of young tattooers have. Yeah. And I like it. You know, the other day we were on, um, was it Monday morning, Jason Leeser um, was uh, hosting the, the, the Monday morning drawing session or just a hangout session. And um, was it Rich? Rich Ren was on there with us and that was his first time on, you know, he'd always avoided like, you know, a lot of public notoriety and everything like that. And to have him on there and, and talking about that himself. And at the end of the session, he was like just so jazzed and so stoked to be a part of it. And he was He's like, this is exactly what it was that I was looking for. This is the kind of community that we've been looking for. And I felt the same thing. Like once I jumped on to Jason's class on Sunday, I think it was back in February. I was just like, this is it. This is it. Here we are. I've arrived. <laughs> and uh, it's, been, it's been pretty radical, you know, with um, Guy's drive, Guy Atchison's drive for this, this whole time. You know, the, the whole purpose of the book was... Like you were saying earlier, it's not it's not necessarily to teach biomech. It's using biomech as that that platform, that informative platform of of art, and teaching these fundamentals that are applied to his style. That it can be applied to other people's style too, you know. And just your own journey. It's pretty rad. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm I'm jazzed as could ever be about all jazzed. this. Jazz. Feeling the do walk. Ah, oh, geez. Today's gonna be that's gonna be the theme today. If I send you more music today, it's gonna be all jazz stuff, okay? Yes. So just like not <clears throat> elevator jazz, like hippie no, no. funky jazz. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you some far out stuff and I'll give you some real mellow stuff too, man. <clears throat> hey man, I okay. got a question for you. I got a question for you. Have you seen that movie uh Soul on Disney Plus? Oh yeah, yeah, that's Dude. a great <laughs> That movie is hands down one of my favorite uh, <laughs> so far. Okay, Seriously. answer me honestly. Answer me honestly. Did you cry? <laughs> Did it? Are you kidding me? I cry whenever I see like a beach blowing the wind sometimes. You're joking. <laughs> like I love the movie. Uh, yeah, I cried. I yeah, cried. I cried like a I was, baby. <laughs> really, and I would say I was, um, uh, my allergies were acting up and it really made my eyes water. <laughs> I mean, so. I got something in my eye. Exactly. No, that was a fantastic movie. And um, uh, if you get a chance, you should watch the behind the scenes stuff because there's some really cool uh, fusions going on with uh, a couple different artists as far as the, the music score and such. So it's oh, pretty really? awesome. Oh, yeah. You check it out. If you guys were watching now, just if you get a chance, go check it out. I like to put stuff like that on in the background. I don't know if I'm like just hanging out by myself and drawing or some, and something, you know what I mean? And either that or like an audio book or something. Um, oh, yeah, I'm all about, I'm all about like that ambient music, like the, yeah. just no words whatsoever. It's like smoothie what? scores and stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think one of the time, one of the times you were on these other classes, Gabe was talking about like, uh, you know, Blade Runner and we were talking about different movie scores a lot. For this and see oh, the Runner. Interstellar, yeah. The Interstellar one, yep. I was mentioning the Interstellar. Um, and not, another one is uh, Dread. I don't know if you've ever seen that remake or reboot of uh, Judge Dread, but that one's pretty good too. Dread, D-R-E-D-D. -E -D -D. But I have a 10, 10 a.m. appointment central time here, but I wanted to jump on and say hello and say greetings for this morning. I hope you have a good day. And thank you for all the information this morning. It was awesome. Thanks. Well, thanks for joining, Ricardo. Uh, you have your class when? Uh, Monday morning at, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. Perfect. I can't wait for your next class, buddy. You have a good day. Okay, you too. Thanks. <laughs> oh, what a nice guy. <laughs> Uh, shout out to the horsemen. Y'all are amazing. Uh, fantastic. You guys have been an absolute inspiration. Anyway, uh, so I kind of powered through this color part pretty quickly. This is what I would call an underpainting. I'm just playing. So, uh, but you can already see what is trying to be built here, right? So, um, I'll mention it for like the 50th time. 
the triangles are still present. Fluidity is still here. Light source obviously coming from this direction. And yeah, um, but you can see, and I'll go back to it, right? All stems from that, from that basic structure. Um, and obviously the line work and stuff needs to get cleaned up, don't mind that. Um, I'll take this off. All stems from that basic structure. This here, this, oh geez, wrong layer. I wish there was a staples button that just you pushed it and it just said wrong layer. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is your foundation here, okay? This is the fundamental. This is your blueprint. This is construction, okay? Your fundamentals are the most, one of the most important things in your artistic journey. And not something you learn just once. It's like learning to play an instrument, learning to learn a new language. You have to consistently practice it. These are exercises and practices that you can do while sitting on the gosh darn couch. Okay? This is the way. Fluid, just fluid. Be one, be water. And so I'm gonna take me off screen share here. We're gonna, I'm gonna say my final piece here. It was a great session. Thank you so much, Ricardo, for joining in. Um, let me kind of pin myself here. Gosh, I hate technology. There we go. Hopefully I'm pinned. Um, I just wanna say, Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo, for jumping in, uh, emphasizing triangles. <laughs> um, and I want to give a shout out to all the rest of the horsemen. You guys are absolutely amazing. Jason, Bruno, I'll see you soon, very, very soon. Uh, Larry, Ricardo, you guys are an absolute inspiration. Um, one of the key factors of my motivation, confidence, and self-worth. Um, I love you guys so much, and um, I wouldn't be who I am without a portion of you. Um, with that said, thank you guys so much for joining my 10 a.m. Thursday morning fundamentals class. Uh, I do apologize once again for the uh, severely low notice uh, change to this, but this will be on demand on the free Reinventing the Tattoo app subscribers edition uh, under uh, events and exercises. Maybe. Um, but it's in the exercise folder where you can find all of the Monday night exercises as well that are also on, on demand that you can catch up with, watch past ones, even submit your work onto the group exercises group, and it will get uh, critiqued by either myself or Guy. If you have any questions, you can follow me on at Frankie Says Things. If you want to book a tattoo with me in the Massachusetts area, Western Massachusetts, um, you can follow or find me here at the Wonderlust Tattoos in Amherst, Massachusetts with Stephen Lambert. Uh, we have a website as well, wonderlusttattoos.com. You can find all of our um, artists and their bios and all of my information on how to contact me for that. Uh, thank you so much to Reinventing the Tattoo, Guy, Gabe, Sandy, Lauren, Kyle. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much um, for letting me to do this. Uh, such an absolute honor. Uh, next week will be our final. I will kind of talk about what we're going to be doing next, next week. Actually, everything's a little more finalized, but I'm very, very excited for it. Um, and, but we will still be taking what we learned in filigree and basic shapes and continuing to carry them on throughout the rest of the courses and chapters. So even if you did miss a couple of classes, that's okay. I will still keep you up to date with terms, conditions, and um, processes of things. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. <sighs> 
I don't think so. Let me just double check to make sure nobody left a question. I don't. I don't think so for that either, but you know, you never know. Um, let's see. Uh, don't think so. So I think everybody's fine. Hello, Bruno. Um, Ginger says morning, morning. Um, yes, Bruno, I love good ambience music. I'm just talking back to your comments. Um, all right, so I'll see you guys next week uh, for the Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, fundamentals class with me, Kier. Follow me on Instagram at Frankie Says Things. And you guys are the absolute best. I can't wait to see what you guys make for Acanthus Leaves. Bye.